Hi everyone, it's Nick. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. In this video today, we are going to be talking about impractical furniture and home decor items. These are the items that we see on social media, on Instagram, on Pinterest, on YouTube, maybe even on my channel, that are quite impractical for day-to-day -day life. They look beautiful and gorgeous when they are shot, you know, in perfect conditions by a professional photographer, but they may not hold up to the realities of people's sort of day-to-day -day lives. Now, I'm not saying necessarily that you don't want to take part in any of these trends or buy any of these pieces or things that we're going to discuss today, it might make sense for you. I just want to sort of sound kind of a word of caution for some of these items because they may look beautiful and gorgeous on social media, but the reality is, is that in our own actual day-to-day -day lives, they're a little bit messier than what we're going to see and what we tend to put on social media, right? So the first item I want to talk about is the RH Cloud Sofa. So if you're not familiar with the RH Cloud Sofa, I talked about it in my unpopular design opinions because I felt like everybody always goes nuts for the sofa. It is a beautiful sofa. The RH Sofa is gorgeous. I have sat on it. It is so comfortable. It's a, it's a type of couch that you want to take a nap on, right? It's really beautiful and gorgeous, very plush, and it's comfortable as all heck. And because it's got a down filling, basically you sit on this thing and honestly, it is like sitting on a cloud. It is gorgeous. You sink into it. It is very, very comfortable. Here's why I think you should be careful about purchasing this sofa for your actual home. And the reason is, is that every time you sit on this sofa, it is going to sort of crinkle and crease and sort of leave a little bit of an indent. Now, RH, by the way, is extremely upfront about this when you go into the store. I have gone to the store and I have talked to the sales clerks many times and they will all tell me the same thing. This is a high maintenance sofa. Technically speaking, RH advises that every time you sit up from the sofa, you are supposed to fluff it, you know, go like this to make it look like it is as beautiful as it looks in these gorgeous photos. Because I'm going to show some photos of the RH cloud sofa and I can tell you it will never look this beautiful in your own home. I'm sorry, it's just not going to happen. The realities of everyday life is that if people have kids or guests, guests are not going to fluff their pillow when they stand up. Neither are kids. I mean, it's hard enough to get kids not to kind of spill juice and smear chocolate into your cloud sofa, let alone get them to fluff it every time they get up. It's not happening. You're going to be spending all your time fluffing this thing because otherwise, in my experience, I think it looks a little bit too messy when it is not fluffed properly. It just looks like it's got lots of different creases and crinkles and it looks a little bit too casual, I think even for me. Personally, I would recommend a sofa that's maybe a little bit firmer and it's just got a little bit of extra structure to it so that you don't have the maintenance that comes with the cloud sofa. I will also say, by the way, there are loads of dupes and loads of other companies that have a very, very similar couch because this couch is so popular from RH. Other manufacturers have noticed and they have come out with their own line. So really in the end, I'm talking about most feather down pillows that have a really soft, squishy feather down cushion. They're all going to be very similar to the cloud sofa in construction, and they're all going to cause that sort of messy lived in feeling when you don't fluff it on a daily basis. I mean, who has the time for that, honestly? Okay, second up on my list for impractical furniture and home decor items would be just low furniture. So I'm going to stick on the sofas for a second here. Now, I am guilty of showing many, many photos on this channel of really low, low furniture, and several of you have called me out for it, and I think it's time to have a conversation about that in this video. So I love low furniture. It's very contemporary. It's very sleek to have these really beautiful low pieces of furniture all around your space. It looks gorgeous. It looks very contemporary. I personally love it. I think it looks beautiful. And by the way, I'm not alone on that. A lot of really modern manufacturers, like I know Rove Concepts and even Crate and Barrel, CB2 for sure, a lot of these places, and even a lot of the designer stuff, they're all kind of modeled on this very sort of European style, super, super low and sleek furniture. Now, let's be honest, it looks beautiful. Well, I think it does anyway. However, let's talk about where it might not be practical. And specifically, I'm talking about those of you that might be a little bit older or at least regularly have guests in your home that are maybe a little bit older or people that have bad knees or people that have disabilities or people that really sort of are challenged to get in and out of these really low sofas or really low profile chairs as well. It's worth acknowledging because I think a lot of people buy them just on looks alone, especially with sort of the prevalence of online manufacturers that are making it really easy to just online shop for these sofas. And a lot of people when buying online are not paying attention to the sofa height when they're making an online purchase. And they're maybe surprised when they come home and they're super low. A lot of people just are finding that these sofas are really difficult to get in and out of. And I totally understand that if you have knee issues, if you're a little bit older, if you find it sometimes a challenge to get in and out of different side chairs or sofas that are really low, I think it's something to consider, especially when taking into account your guests as well. If you have somebody over and they can't get in and out of your furniture, you're not really being a particularly good host. Now, if you love this sofa, 
sofa as I do and you want to get a low sofa, I totally understand. It's not something that's like a do not ever buy. I just think it's something that people should be aware of and really conscious of when making a purchase. So if you are someone that maybe frequently has people uh, that are a little bit older or maybe struggle to get in and out of some of these really low pieces of furniture, give them some options of some side chairs that have a little bit more structure, a little bit more height, and they're gonna find it a lot easier and a lot more comfortable to be able to use those furniture pieces. Just also remember that if you're gonna be keeping these sofas or side chairs for like five, 10, 15, or 20 years, just remember that you are also going to get older and you may struggle with getting out of these really low sofas in time as well. So just think twice about getting these really low sofas. I know they're gorgeous and they're beautiful and they might make sense now and they might make sense for you, but they might not always make sense for your guests or other members of your household or maybe even the future you in 10, 15 years. Okay, third impractical item on my list is shag carpet. So I have made this mistake before. I talked about this in my items. I regret buying video. I too have fallen victim to the Costco shag carpet. I'm so ashamed, I'm so ashamed, but it's true. I also bought the Costco shag carpet and I understand the allure because it looks really plush, really soft, really squishy, really inviting. And you're just thinking, oh, this is just gonna add some amazing texture onto my space. And it's a really good deal because you got it at Costco. The reality is, is that the shag carpets get matted, they get dirty. If you have pets, forget about it. Like if you have a dog like me, those just those hairs, all those different, the fur, it is just gonna get trapped in that shag rug so quickly. They are such a challenge and they are awful to clean. Now there might be some really, you know, beautiful high quality shag carpets out there. I can't really think of where to get them off the top of my head. But um, yeah, these shag carpets, they are beautiful. Sure, when you first buy them for like maybe about five minutes, but then they immediately start getting dirty and they show their age very quickly. They are also by the way, really difficult to clean. I have tried, I have had the whole wet dry situation. I have used the Dyson, I have used whatever I need to do in order to try to clean the rug to the best of my ability and regularly. And I can tell you, they're not easy to keep clean. They always look matted and gross. They are really difficult to bring back to life. And honestly, it's just a really impractical rug for most people. Again, if this is like used in a really low traffic area, like maybe under a bed, any furniture legs, by the way, the especially heavy ones, like maybe a bed or a couch or a coffee table, whatever, that is going to leave a permanent indent inside your shag rug. Good luck ever trying to actually fix that. But I would say that if you are going to do it, I would really think twice because there are other options that are gonna be able to stand up better to the rigors of most people's household use. It's just honestly, in the end, just a really impractical item for the way that most people live. Okay, next up on my list is going to be marble countertops. Oh, this one hurts because I love marble countertops so, so much. I love how gorgeous they look. I mean, just look, I'm gonna show some beautiful images. Don't they look gorgeous? Don't you want this in your kitchen? Yes, of course you do. They are gorgeous, they are amazing. I love marble, I love marble on my countertops, of course. Now there are products like different sealers and different sort of tools that you can use. Um, I'm testing out a product called Tough Skin, which is uh, basically something that is kind of a physical barrier that goes over top of your marble and protects against staining or whatever. I'm currently testing it for my own home that I'm building. Please follow for the home series if you want more updates there. Unless you're going with some sort of like a solution that is going to really protect your marble countertops or you actually just don't care about staining and etching on your marble countertops. Some people are like that. They're just like, you know, in Italy, in old houses in Italy, they may have uh, countertops that are hundreds and hundreds of years old from that are made of marble. And yes, they're stained full of tomato sauce and olive oil and all that stuff, uh, but who cares? They just look lived in. And that's part of what is beautiful about marble countertops. So if you're that person, cool. If you have some sort of a special solution, like I was mentioning tough skin, great. But if you are just planning on putting in countertops in your space and thinking, don't worry, I'll be careful. Careful. Um, no, you won't. Things happen, things spill. People are gonna come over, they're gonna spill a glass of red wine, and my gosh, you do not want to have to deal with restoring tens of thousands of dollars worth of beautiful, gorgeous marble on your countertops because of a glass of red wine. So unless you're gonna spend a whole bunch of money sort of protecting the marble properly, and you're doing that diligently, or you're spending a bunch of money for something like a tough skin or whatever, I would be very, very careful with doing marble on the countertops. The reality is, is that it's not going to stand up to the rigors of most people's kitchens. It is incredibly porous. Lemon juice, tomato juice, red wine, whatever is going to get on the countertops. It's going to sink in and it will always, always be there. Trust me, that dining table back there that I got, that's from Crate and Barrel. That is marble. You could have water that goes down the side of a water glass and it'll leave a permanent shadow on that table. It drives me nuts. Uh, I love the table. It's gorgeous, but marble is just a sponge for anything, honestly, that is food related in the kitchen. So really be careful with your marble 
marble countertops. Instead, I would recommend for most people, quartz is gonna make a lot more sense. There are beautiful quartz countertops that are out there. They're gonna mimic a lot of the effect of marble. Yes, I know you can never really truly replicate the beauty of a natural stone, I get that. But I do think there are beautiful porcelain or quartz solutions that are gonna make a whole lot of sense that are honestly really gorgeous and special as well. So if you really love the design of marble, but you don't necessarily love the maintenance or the cost of protecting it, then I would really think about something like porcelain or quartz because there are gorgeous options out there that are gonna give you pretty much exactly what you're looking for, but without all the maintenance or the headaches that comes with marble. But don't just say that you're gonna be really, really careful. Those are famous last words, honestly. Okay, next up on my list of impractical items that might not make sense in real life is going to be rugs under a dining table. Now, I have actually recommended this in a previous video. I think on my wood flooring video, I can't really remember, but it can really work. It can look lovely. I would recommend something that's probably, you know, washable or really easy to maintain because anytime you have a rug under a food surface, there is going to be crumbs, there's going to be spills, there is going to be problems, there's going to be challenges and maintenance and things that are going to be involved in that. So yes, it looks great in photos, but I would really be careful of the lifestyle that you lead to know like if you have kids, does this make a whole lot of sense to put a rug under the dining room table? Yes, it looks lovely in photos. Is that gonna be something that you're gonna be able to take care of? Is that something you'll be able to maintain long-term? This, by the way, also goes for rugs in the kitchen. A lot of people like to have like, you know, like a little runner or something like that to put in their kitchen. Great, cool, I get it. Adds a little bit of texture, adds a little bit of color. It's kind of an interesting thing uh, to put in there. It's really nice when you're in the kitchen sometimes because, you know, it kind of gives a soft surface for while you're cooking. Totally get it. Just make sure that if you're going to do it, you're choosing something that is going to be practical for you and your family because if you put in something really beautiful beautiful, that's like a vintage rug or something really gorgeous, something that, you know, you're really going to have to get professionally cleaned all the time in order to maintain its beauty. I would really think twice about putting something like that under a dining room table or in the kitchen. Choose something that's washable, like something from Ruggable or something. Choose something that's really easy to maintain or don't do it at all because honestly, it looks really great in photos, but is it going to make sense in real life, especially if you choose something really expensive and difficult to care for? I honestly don't think I have the decision to do it, which is why I don't put a rug under my dining room table because practically speaking, it just doesn't make sense. Okay, that's it for me for today, you guys. If you guys really enjoyed this video, I may do a part two because my gosh, there are so many impractical items that I could talk about in these videos. Until then, I am going to link here to my video on items that I regret buying because I think a couple of these items sort of maybe showed up in this, uh, in that video as well. So you can take a look at that and I will see you all in the next video. Thanks, bye.